A major, major report being released by Guidepost Solutions. This is the group that does a lot of the independent investigations here into all the dirty deeds of these churches. You guys have probably heard me mention their name quite a bit. Uh, most notably, they covered everything going on with the Ravi Zacharias ministry that I've talked about in quite a lot of detail over the last couple of years. And now the Southern Baptist Convention. The report has been released. It's over 300 pages long. This is not good. We'll talk about it in great detail in less than 10 seconds. First, guys, if you could, if YT lets you, hit that like button, share the video. Please share the video. Hit the bell, subscribe, and wear the glasses because I'm blind. So I'm sure that many of you are aware of what's been going on in the Southern Baptist Convention. If you are not, well, I'll briefly fill you in. There has been much much talk about all of the various misdeeds, the dirty, dirty misdeeds going on with these pastors and leaders that go all the way back to 2019 when an article was first published about the matter within the Southern Baptist Convention. This isn't the only problem that the SBC has had. I mean, they have you know, gotten into it about CRT, many other issues. But the main one that has really been plaguing them has been uh, what is taking place here with the, we'll just call it the mistreatment here of these women. And this report that was released has really proven what many of us had already thought. Just to go over some of the highlights with you, and I will put the full report down below in the description for anybody who would like to check that out. Multiple pastors, leaders, had been covering this up for years. You guys have to realize this, that in 2019, when this initial report came out, there were over 700 women that had reported that they had been mistreated by one of these SBC leaders. This report backs up those claims. Pastors not only ignored the reports that were given when it was first, you know, brought to their attention, but they would often shame these women behind their backs, make fun of them. One email that was actually uncovered here by the Guidepost Solutions Report by an SBC leader had accused these women and these survivors of putting together a satanic scheme to try and interrupt the ministry of these pastors from being able to teach to their congregations. A satanic scheme. Sounds like projection to me. That's exactly what these pastors did. That's what they do. They accuse others of what it is that they are guilty of. A satanic scheme is exactly what these pastors, that SBC as a whole, and their leaders have been doing for years and years. And this report backs all of that up. The report also details that the SBC had failed to create a database after saying that they would to document these mistreaters within the SBC. They were supposed to create this database for people to be able to access at any time they want. They did not do that. The Guidepost, Pollution, the Guidepost Solutions Report instead says that, well, they had kept a little written log, but this wasn't anything that they took seriously. In fact, even names that they had on this list, they were not reported in any way. These pastors were allowed to remain in their position of pastors of the church. No consequences whatsoever, nothing at all. Whatever their ministry position was, whether it was pastor, whether it was elder, doesn't matter. They were allowed to stay in those exact positions. And then another interesting part of the report that this was not at least made mention in public before. Johnny Hunt who is a, not just a, a minister, but he was a former SBC president, former SBC leader in 2010. Even he was not exempt from this report. He, in fact, was accused in this report of these misdeeds against a fellow SBC pastor, this pastor's wife, that he had done these horrible things too. It's also documented in the report. This is somebody that was 
well-respected. Nobody would have expected it could have been him, but we know that the SBC presidents and the leaders and all of them, they are not exempt from this at all. They have been at the focal point of a lot of this. I mean, Ed Litton, who's the current SBC president, is going to be gone here. They have their big conference coming up June 12th through the 15th. They're going to be electing a brand new SBC leader, but we've done this before. Is it really going to, you know, bring any change? Ed Litton had announced a couple months ago that he wasn't going to be seeking another term. And yet this is the guy that was going to come in and he was going to fix everything. He was going to restore the SBC back to the great prominence that it once had. There was so much more in this report about just how these women were just degraded. They were pushed away, cast to the side, told to shut up, accused of all these things. While these pastors maintained their power. And another interesting note here. The investigation claims that there are currently still nine of these ministers, these SBC ministers that have been accused of these misdeeds that are still serving in ministry to this day. And at least two of them are associated directly with SBC churches. How discouraging is that to know that you have individuals like this who are actually preaching God's word and yet they've done all these things with no accountability whatsoever. They've been allowed to stay in power. The report had indicated that the SBC cared more about protecting themselves and their convention from litigation rather than protecting victims, the women that were involved here, giving them a platform and actually holding people accountable. Imagine that. Sounds like so many other big mega churches out there, doesn't it? That I've been talking about now for years. Hillsong, just to name another one. You know, it really makes you wonder. <laughs> Who can you trust anymore these days? When it comes to these big churches and these pastors, they all try to come in and say the right thing, right? We're going to... We're going to bring it back to, we're going to get it all straightened out, right? Healing will, healing will occur. We need just a time of healing. And then what happens? More of the same, more of the same. It's patterns, ladies and gentlemen, it's patterns and behavior. And I have so many people that they come after me in the comments and they say, well, who are you to judge? Look, we are calling out sin. These aren't just people that have had this stuff happen just one time. These are patterns. This is their lifestyle. They live this way. They pose as pastors and they use their positions of power to manipulate and control and hurt people. Like these women. But so many just make excuses for it. Oh, you're... You know, you wonder why they make the excuses that they do. Could it be because they themselves possibly engage in the same behavior? You know, they're really quick to come to the defense of these pastors and these leaders in these big mega churches, right? They're so quick. Just makes you wonder. Now, the guidepost solutions report did say that as one of the suggestions that what the SBC should do is create an independent commission that would manage all of these reported uh, cases. So any woman that comes forward in the future, if there is a case of misdeeds against them, that the SBC would not even be directly involved. This would go to their independent commission, who would then report the findings back to the SBC. But the independent commission would more or less serve as overseers. As it comes to the SBC and any future allegation that may come out, which you know, unfortunately, it's probably going to happen. And I'm sure there are still many more women that haven't even come out yet that actually talked about something that maybe happened to them in one of these churches. But again, already over 700 have done that. And the fact that this has gone unchecked for as long as it has is an indictment against the Southern Baptist denomination, the Southern Baptist Convention, as a whole. How can God come in and dwell in a place like this when there is so much filth and sin that is running rampant within it? I've said this before and I believe that God is cleaning house 
on these big mega churches, these big mega denominations. He's trying to get things cleaned up. So as more of these investigations are underway, they take place, we get the reports, let the flush out process begin. Who will the new SBC leader be? I have no clue. They got a lot of names in the hat right now. Will it make a difference? Only time will tell. But here's the key. Because it's just like with politicians, right? What is the heart of the person? I don't care what their name is. I don't care if they're a Republican, a conservative. doesn't matter. Where's the heart? Are they willing to do what's right for the kingdom of God? Are they willing to truly serve without compromise? They don't have any power at the end of the day. The power belongs to God. Who are these leaders to think they have all this power to do whatever they want and control people? Do they not know that they're going to face God one day? I don't know why they think that they can just walk around and not be held accountable. Are they that naive? Are they that ignorant to what's going on here? That complex, though, gets so big to the point where they just feel they can just do whatever they want and get away with it. I'll just I'll, look. That's what happens. They all come together. It's a it, it's a it's a whole group effort. They all protect each other. They hear about it. Oh, you call so and so SBC church? Yeah, I heard you. Were, this woman accused you of this. Eh, whatever. They brush it under the rug. They all protect each other. When you crack the door, and I've said this, I'm going to keep saying it. When you crack the door of compromise open just this much, that's all the devil needed to completely blow that thing open altogether. And you have what happened here at the SBC. I'll put the full report down below if you guys would like to read it again. Uh, and you can let me know your thoughts on it. Also, if you enjoy my daily content here talking about end time Bible prophecy headlines and you want to help support my ministry, with a generous donation, click the link to my PayPal. It's in the description or sign up on my Patreon for five bucks a month. When you do that, you will get all the alerts for all the content I put out. Don't rely on YT for it, guys. They barely push the notifications out and I am pretty much censored on all levels. So check that out. You can also leave your comments. They're completely censorship free and send me direct messages. Again, all the links are down below. A big, big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity greatly appreciated. Now, we're not done yet. Stick with me. As always, we never leave any video without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that's you, if you're watching this video right now and you have not yet accepted Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a prayer right now to get you to do just that. We are in the last days and Christ is coming soon. This is the time. This is the day of salvation. The first thing you want to do is acknowledge that you're a sinner. That's something that we all are. But let me tell you the good news. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin. Not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles, habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. But if you humbly go before the Lord and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe that sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then... You invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you guys again. Like I said down below, you can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.